Hey everyone, Miguel Benitez here, helping you on the search for thoughtful Christianity. Today I'm going to be taking a look at C.S. Lewis's famous trilemma argument, in which he argues that when we, when we take a look at the person of Jesus, we're only left with three options about who he was. He's either a liar, a lunatic, or he is Lord. Before we take a look at this argument, though, I do want to encourage you, make sure to subscribe to my channel uh, for, for more content uh, regarding faith, philosophy, and literature. Now, one of my favorite books is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I get to teach through this book every year uh, with my middle school and maybe ninth grade high schoolers. And um, it's usually great because it's a nice, easy read and the students really get into it. But one of the parts that always captures my attention is when Lucy goes into Narnia, and this is now her second visit into Narnia, but this time Edmund follows her without her knowing. And so Edmund follows her into Narnia, and after they had each kind of had their own journey in Narnia, they come back, Lucy knows that Edmund has now seen Narnia, He's try she begins to try and tell her older siblings, Peter and Susan, about this land that she'd gone to, and who she saw there, and what it was like, and Edmund uh, begins to deny it when Lucy looks to him for corroborating support that they did in fact see this land. Edmund says, we were just playing a game, she's being silly, it's not real. And so um, Lucy becomes very upset at this. Um, she knows that Edmund is lying. She's frustrated that her siblings won't believe her. And so Peter and Susan begin to get worried about Lucy and, and this imaginary world that she keeps talking about. So they go to the professor and they start talking to the professor about the situation. And, and, and the professor, as he's hearing them talk he says and and lucy she's known for for telling tales is she known for lying and exaggerating and they said well no that that's what's troubling us is normally it's edmund who is the liar and the one that won't tell us the truth um so so that's why we're we're concerned and the professor just kind of mumbles to himself he says logic why don't they teach logic anymore what do they teach these children in school these days? And Peter and Susan, the older siblings, are kind of confused. They're like, what, what is he talking about? And, and they said, you see, we're not worried that she's lying. We were worried it might be something far worse. And the professor says, you think she's mad? You think she's crazy? And I said, well, we were worried it's a possibility. And he said, all you need to do is spend just a little bit of time with that girl and you know that she's not crazy. And I said, then what else are we supposed to make of this? And he said, well, if she isn't lying and she isn't crazy, the logical conclusion is you believe her. You trust in what she's saying. Now, obviously, this caught Peter and Susan off guard um, because now they were having to, to face the reality that there might be something that exists beyond what they had considered before. Now, I always enjoy this because when we read this part, it allows my class to have a conversation on Lewis's trilemma, which he's obviously incorporating here into the story of Lucy in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. But recently, uh, atheists have begun to kind of attack Lewis's trilemma and say, it's a false trilemma. Now, keep in mind the word trilemma, meaning you have three options, right? You're, you're putting a person in a predicament in which they have to pick one of three options. And atheists are saying, no, this is a false trilemma. There are certainly more options than just the three that Lewis gives us. And so, first, I want to go ahead and read to you what it is that Lewis actually says in his book, Mere Christianity. And then I'll explain to you why I think Lewis's argument is not, in fact, a false trilemma, but one that still needs to be considered today. Lewis writes, I am trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him. 
I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is the one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would be either a lunatic on a level with a man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the Son of God, or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. And so what we have here is Lewis laying out those three options. That Jesus has not left the option on the table for us that he is some great moral teacher. He is either lying about the things that he said. He truly believes the things that he said, but they're false, making him a lunatic. Or he is who he claimed to be, which is Lord. Now, some have said that this argument, it, it doesn't work because it's missing a very important option that Lewis didn't put on the table. And it would be another L word, legend. You see, the idea that Jesus never existed. And therefore, we don't have to pick from the three options that Lewis has put on the table for us. Okay, well, but that doesn't really work. You see, we need to keep Lewis's argument in context. Lewis is using this argument for the person who claims that they believe Jesus was a good moral teacher. The person who claims that the teachings of Jesus are good moral teachings is not doubting the historicity of the existence of Jesus. They are doubting his claims of divinity. But then there is one other option that some have suggested Lewis left off the table. And that is that Jesus was just simply mistaken. He wasn't lying. He really did believe the things that he was saying. But he wasn't crazy either. You see, a lot of people believe things to be true that are actually false. And sometimes they're even quite wild things. I mean, think about it. Even the discussions that we have on this channel and other apologetics channels. Does God exist? There's a whole lot of people out there who say yes, and there's a whole lot of people out there who say no. That's a radically different answer to a very important question. Does that make either side crazy? No. So we can believe things or not believe things that are significant and important and be mistaken without being crazy. Right? So for example, there are some people who deny that um, the astronauts never made it to the moon, right? That this whole thing was a hoax uh, uh, put on by the United States because of their tensions with the Soviet Union and they needed to win the space race. Now, the vast majority of historians and scholars would say, no, this could not have happened. Um, it was definitely a, a real event, all right? And if you happen to believe that there was some conspiracy or it's a hoax, just follow along with me here for a moment, though. The vast majority of historians do believe that it did happen. Does that mean pe people who think it didn't happen, despite all the evidence that suggests that it did? Does that mean they're crazy? Right? No. No, they're not crazy. Okay, they have a certain view that's in the minority. They have a certain view that even perhaps seems to be um, against some of the evidence that can be presented, but it doesn't make them crazy. And so some atheists are suggesting, hey, Jesus was just mistaken. 
Jesus was just wrong. It doesn't make him a bad person. It doesn't mean that he was intentionally lying, but it also doesn't mean he's crazy. And this is when I always bring up an example to my students. Let's say that I deny that American astronauts ever landed on the moon. Or let's say that I believe in not just one god, but I believe in, in, in multiple gods. I believe in the Greek pantheon of gods, right? Let's say that that were the case. Okay, that seems kind of far-fetched. That seems problematic on a number of levels. But does it mean I'm insane? No, not really. Right? But then, and I always ask my students, what if I tell you that what you need to do is leave your mother and your father and your family and trust in what I'm saying? You need to be fully devoted to who I am because I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can get to God but by me. I am the only way you can be reconciled to God. Now these claims are different. Someone who genuinely believes that kind of claim and is mistaken we do begin to worry about their mental state. We do begin to wonder if this is a safe person, if this is someone who is sane. And so I don't think that Lewis has committed a fallacy in his laying out of the dilemma, or the trilemma rather. And I think that that question is still on the table. Not to the atheist who thinks Jesus was completely made up or that we can't even know what Jesus said. But to the one who says, I think he may have been a prophet. I think he may have been a good moral teacher. I think Lewis's argument is still the one that's on the table. He didn't leave us with the option of believing he was a good moral teacher. We only have three options available to us. He either was lying about who he was, which makes him not a good moral teacher, but rather a liar, a deceiver, a cult leader. Or he believed the things that he said and he was wrong, which means he was having visions and delusions and, and, and believing, uh, had a hard time sorting out between reality and fiction or, or the other experiences he was having which definitely puts him in an unstable mental state, making him a lunatic. Or, Jesus really was who he claimed to be, and he's the Lord. He's the Lord that we need to, as, as C.S. Lewis says, bow down before. Trust in him for the salvation of our sins. And so I'd encourage you to consider a question that Jesus asked his disciples. Who do you say that Jesus is? I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. If you think I've missed an option that needed to be considered, please mention it down below. I'd love to engage with you on this conversation. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Please be sure to subscribe and to stick around and watch a couple more videos on similar topics. Take care.